What is a data structure? It's a strategy of storing related data in a computer's memory. There are a lot of them. Why do you need that many? We shall find out as we progress. Let's start with looking at the simplest data structure there is, an array. It's a contiguous block of bytes in memory where elements of the array are laid out immediately next to each other. Additionally, arrays can contain any type of elements, but one array can hold only a single type of element. A string in C is basically an array of characters. If you were to store a name as a character array in C, you would have to do something like this. The weird escaped zero character is needed to indicate the end of the string. Anyway, name is a character array. Each character takes one byte, so if the array is starting at address 1024, the layout would look like this. And this name is an alias to the address of the first character in the array. To access the third element of this array, you have to specify the number of jumps you need to make from the start to get there, which will be two. The way C will understand this is by adding the necessary number of bytes to reach the location, which is just two. The resulting address would be 1024 plus two, 1026, and at the address, we have our third element of the array. Let's also consider an array of ints storing marks of a student. If the first int is at address 1024, the rest of them would still lay next to each other, but at intervals of four bytes, as each int would occupy four bytes. And this is how the layout would look for an int array. Although you'd use the same syntax construct to access the third element of an int array, the difference will be that for each next element, you'd have to jump four bytes. This implicitly happens as we specify that it's an int array. The number will be multiplied by the size of each element to arrive at the right location. For ints, we'd have to jump four bytes to get to the next number. So in this case, it's two times four plus 1024, giving us 1032, the starting address of the third int in the array. Let's look back at what happened. Marks2 and Names2 accessed the third element, but the addresses were different, despite starting at the same one. As seen earlier, the jumps happened based on the type of elements stored in the array. You can see how it wouldn't be easy with this kind of an approach to store multiple types of elements in the same array. But again, an array is defined to be a contiguous, homogeneous collection of elements. The takeaway here is that given the position of an element in an array, it can be accessed almost immediately with a simple arithmetic operation. And that is one of the many metrics you need to consider before choosing a data structure for your application. Another one of them being deletion. Given an array, if you were to delete an element from it, you'd have to move over quite a few elements. So before choosing any data structure, following are the common properties one should consider. Access, insert, delete, and search. We shall get into the details in the upcoming videos, but let's briefly go through these properties for the arrays. We saw that arrays are great at access. They're mostly static, so insertion is mostly out of question. Deletion is also not very good, as seen earlier. And searching can be nice for sorted elements, but not so much when they aren't. Coming back to data structures being a strategy, every strategy has its pros and cons. There is not one god strategy that can be used everywhere. It's the programmer's task to identify the use case and choose the right data structure. It shall become clearer as we dive into each one of them individually in the upcoming videos. And knowing how data structures perform with respect to these metrics is what will help you decide. Thanks for watching.